Hello and welcome. Take a look at the exact two transitions I'm going to make today. First, using method one, and then using method two. You may have noticed that method two gives a wider pan effect than method one. Now look at a few more examples. First, some short videos I made. Then a slightly longer compilation. Interested? Keep watching and I'll show you how it's done in easy stages. OK, here's part one of my two part video series. Method two is explained in part two. Open Shotcut. Now I'm using version 20.07.11 which was released in July 2020. Now I'll just run through how I've set up this project. My video mode is 1080p at 25 frames per second. In this version, proxy editing and preview scaling were introduced. Now I've set preview scaling to 360p and proxy editing on. Using proxy makes editing on the timeline really smooth. Bear in mind though that you will have to deselect this feature for method 2. Now I'll explain about this later. OK, now I've already imported two video clips into my playlist. Now I'll drag them both onto the timeline. I think I'll mute this track for now. Here's clip two. Move them next to each other. Zoom in. Now I'm going to add two more video tracks. This is the transition I'm going to make into a whip pan. So I move clip two to the track above. I then add a size and position filter to clip one. Next, I have to tell you some important facts about the size and position filter. From version 20.09, released in September 2020, the size and position filter is to be merged with the rotate and scale filter and renamed the size, position and rotate filter. Here's a comparison of the two filter panels. No need to worry though, because you will see that the four main value fields for position and size remain identical. So this process will work fine no matter which version you are using. I'll be using the term size and position filter for this tutorial. Now I add a preset to clip one. It's going to be a slide out right preset. Now I'm going to choose from the list, slide out right, there it is. This gives a one second slide right movement. I also add a size and position filter to clip two. Now, because clip one had a slide out right preset, we're going to give a slide in from left preset to clip two. This, of course, will make clip two slide to the right as well. This is shown by a dark triangle in the keyframes panel on the left. There it is. Next, I go to open other, then color, and I'm going to drag a transparent clip onto the timeline. Notice you'll see a black preview screen before you drag it onto the timeline. This is completely normal for a transparent clip. Now, put your transparent clip on the top track and make it seven frames long. Now, to do this, position the playhead at the beginning of the clip using ALT plus arrow shortcut, and then press the right arrow seven times. Then press O, which is the shortcut for OUT, and your transparent clip has a length of seven frames. You may need to zoom in at this point. We're going to use this transparent clip as a marker to help us move our clips. Zoom in, actually zoom in a lot and center the transition in the timeline. My next task is to change the transition duration from the default one second to just seven frames. I'll be doing this in the keyframes timeline shown here on the left. 
But first, I position the playhead at the left-hand edge of the transparent clip in the main timeline, knowing this is 7 frames from the end of the clip. Now look in the keyframes timeline, and you'll see that the playhead is also 7 frames from the end of the clip. So if I zoom in, I can then click and hold the black circle and slide it to the playhead position. Notice the frame numbers appear in a blue box, so I can be sure it is at the 7 frames position. Now I do the same with clip 2. I use the playhead as a guide and drag the black circle to make a 7 frame transition. And here's the result. It's very quick, so here it is frame by frame. Great! Next I need to export just this 7 frame transition and save it as an MP4 video. At the time of making this tutorial, which is August 2020, Shotgut doesn't have timeline markers, although this may be changed in a future version. For now though, to export just a section of the timeline, I need to select Copy Timeline to Source. There it is, but before I do this I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to set the playhead right at the beginning of the transition, and secondly copy the time and frame value of this position using Ctrl C. There it is, 7 seconds and 6 frames. So when I go to copy timeline to source, press the space bar to stop playback, then paste this time value here, and press return, the playhead automatically goes to the exact position I need. Then I press I for in. I then find the exact end of the transition by using the right and left arrows to move a frame at a time, and press O for out. There we are, the last frame of the slide transition. Then I can select export file and just the 7 frame slide transition will be exported as a very short mp4 file. Now the next step is to import this mp4 file back into Shotcut. Select open file and select the file, drag it into Shotcut's preview pane and drag it onto the timeline. I move the transparent clip out of the way, then position the imported clip to align with clip 2. I then navigate to the end of this clip and I find that I have to delete the last two frames to make the transition run into clip 2 smoothly. Now the next stage is to apply a blur box filter to this clip. I do this with a filters panel. I type BLU and the choice of blur filters appears. I set the blur box filter to 0 pixels height and 99 pixels width, which is the full value. It looks OK. However, there's a problem. I notice there are two vertical dark areas on the left and right edges, which doesn't look too good. To rectify this, I add a size and position filter to the clip. Filters, size and position, select distort and drag out the left and right edges until the dark edges disappear. Now I'll preview this looks fine, so to make my short demo video I'm going to export the complete timeline and see what it looks like. And here's the result after I've added some background music, and also an all important whoosh sound effect. I'll tell you more about the whoosh sound effect in a moment, but first I want to show you how you can change the speed of this transition slightly if you like to. If the transition is too quick, select the transition clip, go to properties then speed, and change the speed to say 0.8 times. This gives a slower transition. However, if it's still too fast, try 0.5 times. Properties, speed, 0.5. So here's the transition again three times. Firstly, without any speed changes, then with a speed of 0.8 times, and then 0.5 times. Looks great, but let's say you want a right to left transition. The good news is that it's easy to do. Carry out exactly the same steps as you did for a left to right transition, 
Just swap the direction of your slide in and slide out presets when you apply the size and position filters to your two original clips. To make it clear, look at this diagram. The diagram shows which size and position presets to use for each transition. I mentioned earlier about the whoosh sound effect. I found my whoosh sound effects from hitting the internet. YouTube has plenty. I had to search quite a bit to find suitable whoosh sounds for transitions, but what I did find was that if I searched for fireball or fire whoosh sounds, they gave some good results. When I found some non-copyright ones, I captured them using Audacity, trimmed the start and end points, and saved them as MP3 files. I then imported those back into Shutcut, placed them on an audio track, and positioned them carefully so that they coincided with the action on screen. If they were too loud, I adjusted the volume with the gain or volume filter in Shutcut. So that's the process explained for method one. Before I go though, I just want to quickly run through a new project in which I create a short demo video which has five clips and four motion blur transitions. I'll speed up the action a bit and show you a few extra tips to help you improve your workflow. So bear with me for a few more minutes. So here's my new project. Now I've prepared five short video clips and put them on track V1. I'll play them. I want to replace this audio, so I've added an audio track and imported an audio clip, which I'll play to you later. Next, I'll import a transparent clip and make it seven frames long. Then I position the clips using the transparent clip as a guide. Select the first clip and add a size and position filter. Choose the preset, slide out right and make it seven frames long. Now here's a tip. You can save this seven frame transition as a new preset, which will save time later. I'll begin its name with 001, so it will appear at the top of the drop down list. I've even had the idea of typing the name into Notepad so I can just cut and paste it into Shutcut. Now onto clip two, I'll need a slide in from left preset. Again, I'll save this as a preset for later use. Now this clip is going to transition straight into clip 3, so I'll add another size and position filter, this time add a slide out left preset. My transitions in this project are going to go in alternate directions. Once again I rename this preset for later. Then on to clip 3. I'll add a slide in from right preset to this one. I'll preview the first two transitions. Looks great. Now I'll save time with the next transition by selecting my 001 preset. I can also save more time in clip 4 by copying and pasting the filters from clip 2. And finally I choose my new 004 sliding from right preset.
Now for the next part I'm going to do something slightly different than the procedure I told you earlier. Because there are four transitions, exporting each one separately using timeline to source would be quite fiddly and time consuming. So instead I'm going to export the whole timeline. I'll just trim the end of this audio clip first. When that's done, I'll import the MP4 back into the project. I'll put it onto track V3. Then I'll navigate to each transition, split at the transition points, then delete the non-transition sections. I then have to go through each transition and remove the last frame. Then I add a blur box filter to each transition as I described earlier in this tutorial. and a size and position filter set to distort so I can drag out the edges to remove the dark edges on the left and right. And then another time saving tip, copy and paste the filters on this first transition to all the other transitions. Then I'll add a fade out to black to the last clip and a fade out to the audio track and also a fade in from black to the first clip. Nearly done, but to add the icing to the cake, I'm going to add some whoosh sounds to the transitions. So I add another audio track, find a suitable MP3 file, Import it. Then it's just a matter of positioning it to coincide with each transition. To copy and paste this audio clip, press C, move the playhead and then press B. I'm using the waveforms to guide me to the right positions. And that's the final part of the process. Here's my final exported video. I hope you like it. And that's it for part one. In part two, I'll be showing you how you can use Shotcut and the graphics editor GIMP to create whip pan transitions with a wider pan movement. See you in part two.